Hey folks, Jonathan here. I'm back. Uh, getting ready to take this engine back apart. About as I hate to. But uh, she's got to come down so we can finish up all the machine work. And uh, I'm going to wait to build this flange until I put it back together the, the next time. And let me see. I've got, uh, I've got to turn the crank down. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. We're going to make our slinger. We'll go ahead and drill and tap the bottom for the, uh, the oil fill, I mean the oil drain, and we'll probably do something for the oil fill. Uh, let me see, we've got to, uh, still got to drill these holes, put our dial pins in, and go ahead and machine counter bore this down in. And uh, I'm going to check compression height one more time before I take it apart, and I'm going to figure out exactly where I need to what I need to turn down, what I need to do on this end of the crankshaft. This end of the crankshaft is basically done. Let's see if I can get this fully off. Uh, I mean, it's done. It's that sleeves on it. Uh, our seal fits right on there. I'm not going to press it in yet. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's ready to go. And, uh, We'll just pop it in and then uh, of course this goes back on the outside of it and that's it so anyway that's basically the only thing we got finished up is this end of the crankshaft but we'll get the other end we'll figure out where this gear sets in there i want to go ahead and uh basically what we're going to do so so you'll know we'll turn this down for this gear and i think we're going to run the gear in. The good thing about this gear being wider than our cam is I don't have to worry about getting it quite as perfect. And, uh, but we, you know, we still may have to shim a little bit and bring it out just a little bit. Let me get down here where you can see from the crankshaft. And, uh, we'll do that. And then we're going to build it to where, or do it so where we can put a seal on it and pretty much try to figure out where our cover is going to be and put you know mark it for the where we want the seal to be and then on the outside of that we're either going to run this gear out here or this gear out here one of the two uh we'll figure them out uh i may go ahead and uh I kind of hate to do it, but I may go ahead and try to key this, or not this, but go ahead and key the crankshaft. Go ahead and see what size key I want to use in the uh, crank, and go ahead and cut it in two, and then uh, we'll broach this later, and just try to get everything for the internals finished up so we can, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and get the block cleaned up, get the inside of it cleaned up how I want it, and all that good stuff, and then we'll put it all together. Uh, maybe for the, you know, for the final the next time we bolt it together, and I might bolt it together at least once more, you know, before that. But uh, it's not going to hurt to try to finish everything up and then take it back apart. You know, it's not a real complicated setup, so it don't take long. Anyway, let me get at it and uh, we'll see what we can get done. Okay, folks, I sort of changed my mind on what I was working on. Uh, I decided I wanted to go ahead and get this machine freed up, so. I haven't moved this piece. I wanted to get everything done before I, you know, uh, took the piece out. You know, winds are blowing, rains are coming in hard. So, excuse me, but but anyway, here's what we ended up doing. Uh, as you can see, we got it's hard to see, I'm sure, but I mean, I got a flat down here. It's going to bolt down. We have cut a uh, with a half inch ball mill. We've run a groove through here. We've cut out for our uh, rockers. And what I've done, I actually moved the rockers. I changed what I was doing. We're going to go with two bolts in the center. Now, I went ahead and moved these out. And I haven't deburred anything and stuff, so this ain't sitting in perfect. But uh, once it's deburred, it'll sit exactly where it's supposed to be. What I did was I went ahead and moved these out to where my cams are going to be on my engine. And the reason I've done that is because we are cutting these off. And we are going to take these, and which curve in anyway, but we'll cut these 
we're going to redesign them and weld them onto this one and actually uh, make it a little smaller so it don't look like it's out of place. But uh, we're going to use these ends. We'll clean them up and, uh, and they'll just get welded to there. And uh, that'll take care of the problem. We'll, uh, we're going to have to regrow a new hole in the top of the rocker and we'll concave it like this, like a countersink, so it'll take oil. We've got to uh, pull out a little bit right here on each side in the right spot for the uh, bow springs. And uh, anyway, it, they'll work out just fine when I'm done. I'll... Okay, folks, uh, next day, back out working on it a little bit. Uh, we're at that time it's a slow steady rain it's not uh the thunderstorms like we've been having but it's been raining every day so uh that's why i'm sort of getting a lot done on the engine a lot more than usual and uh anyway uh a little update on the dog the uh the little chihuahua long-haired chihuahua i think is what they figured out it was uh my wife took it to the vet and uh you know it's in good shape all that good stuff and uh no chip uh no collar I uh, have not been able to find out who uh, it belongs to. So what we've done is we've taken the Chihuahua over to my wife's father's, my father-in-law's, and he lost his puppy uh, a, you know, a while back and lost it as in it passed away. And he's you know elderly up in age and uh, he's seen it and fell in love with it, absolutely. So, of course, we explained to him that if we found, you know, the owner, that it's got to go back, and he understands that. I mean, he he wouldn't have a problem with that if, as long as it's the owner. But uh, but if it, you know, if we don't find the owner, it's got a good home, and uh, you know, uh, I could have uh, easily kept it here, and it wouldn't have took long to get too attached to it. But we was, I was trying not to, and uh, my dog, which you probably see in the, uh, I guess you call it my avatar, or my little picture up there. Uh, that was my German Shepherd. He was a long-haired, and uh, he was a, a loyal, wonderful dog. I, you know, I, I really liked him, and uh, he was sort of my buddy. But he run up on a deer out back of my place here, and he went to running the deer, and I heard him barking, and I headed that way, and uh, he just kept running the deer and run across the road and actually got hit. and. Uh, Unfortunately, I had to be the one to go tow the vehicle that uh, that hit him because it actually uh, hit the you know got the radiator and stuff on it. So it was kind of a rough rough time. But uh, but yeah, I, I try not to get too attached to any dogs now because of that. Uh, you know, uh, the last thing you you know you really want to do is lose a dog. But but anyway, but that's the story on that. And uh, we're gonna get back on this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little machining right here so it clears these springs and maybe uh, we may leave this stuff so I may bring the corners in a little bit even just try to clean things up make it look a little nicer and uh, and I could have done this out of aluminum easy this piece but uh, but I really didn't want to I wanted to do it out of steel uh, I just uh, you know I really don't like billet stuff being on this to start with, but I definitely uh, definitely didn't want aluminum billet on there. And uh, so anyway, I'm gonna keep at this, and uh, of course we're gonna get the engine tor torn down the rest of the way, and go ahead and get on all that stuff. I think I've got me a carburetor. I'm not positive. Uh, I will uh, be able to update you on that a little later. But anyway, let's get at it. I want to show you a quick little tip here that I uh, figured out a long time ago. Uh, when you're marking, you know, I want to I want to mark these, but I want to mark them, you know, a particular distance away. If you'll take a center punch, like one of these round ones, and, uh, you know, this is to go through a hole to, to center punch inside of a hole. But uh, just sit it down and go around it. You know, they, this is, all, of course, all different sizes, but, you know, get the one you want and then uh, just hold it straight. And go right around it and it'll actually scratch a uh, area in it where you can relieve you know something like this but it gets it good and straight and I'll uh, I'll scratch it real quick and show you okay hopefully you can see that but that's the uh, I scratched the radius of the valves in there or the springs in there and uh, what we'll do is we'll go in and uh, cut them to that uh, probably can't do it on the uh, 
Well, as thin as it is, I can probably put it in a vise and do that with a uh, deburring tool. Just run in there and bring them out, and then take you know maybe a half round file and finish them up. But just bring them down to them lines. But as you can see, you know it works really good because they're they're exact what you want. And uh, anyway, let's get at it. All right, folks, we're working on the uh, put the flat on the uh, pen. Now this is a uh, this is another hardened pen and uh, pretty rough to work with, but we're getting it. But uh, getting ready to drill the holes, and then we'll go back and drill the holes through the rocker stand also. Okay, folks, uh, the flat's done, the holes are drilled, and I've just got them sitting on there, and you can see they don't line up here, but when we cut these and put them back together, they will, of course. I just got that slit on the two old studs there, which uh, is just very temporary. But, uh, but we've got our hole drilled right and everything. So now all we got to do, we'll trim all this off. It's about the right distance. Uh, like I said, hopefully we won't have to shorten them up. But uh, put our new ones on, finish drawing our holes in the bottom. And I may, yeah, we could actually do a hole under this and countersink it. And I'll measure everything out. You know, it's kind of aggravating because these are not in line. But uh, we can add to two holes there. I think I'm going to add something on the ends to hold them, hold them down to. And uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I'll show you that as I go. Alright. Okay folks, even though this is not the sonar that we're using, not the head that we're using, we're going to go ahead and uh, these uh, small studs, take them out, back out. And uh, shouldn't be in but just a few threads. We'll go ahead and drill and tap this so we can bolt our uh, rocker stand on and go ahead and uh, get our rockers right. Okay folks, I want to show you what we've got here so far. Uh, as you can see, I've got the rockers set up how I want them. And I've got them welded on, but I, I don't have them totally welded. I'm going to take them off, weld the bottom sides and grind them good and get them how I want them. Uh, they're going to work out really good. Like Alright, let's take a wrench on here and uh, I'll show you. You know, they're not they're not real hard to open, so they're going to work just fine. Uh, rockers are, you know, nice and free. Uh, you got to watch because the bottoms of these are rounded, so you actually want to uh, set it up so when it opens, you know, it, it actually loses length, and you want it to be able to roll on the top of your valve, and uh, which these do really good, and uh, they pull back. If you don't. I've actually seen this happen before. If they don't roll good, and when you open up, they actually try to pull back on the valve. And if it pulls over on the valve, it'll wear your guide out really quick. So now you can always, uh, you know, re-arch this a little bit to get it rounded. But you know, you want it on there and to where it's going to work really good. But uh, then we're going to work out just fine. Uh, we're going to do some machining to take this off, and you know, do a little cleaning up on our. Uh, on our rocker stand there and uh, I wanted to show you you can see I use socketed cap screws and uh, you know, when this is all together on the bike hopefully you can't see that and uh, I know I, I'm not sure what your Allen heads come out I don't think it was that early but uh, for clearance issues I didn't have a lot of a choice and uh, but you know they're not they're not gonna give any trouble but, uh, and I wanted to uh, sort of do a little shout out uh, Kermit Wardell came down from uh, Chicago and uh, spent oh just about half a day with me and uh, he's a YouTube subscriber and uh, anyway we uh, of course you know he's a car guy so and uh, he's got a couple or got a gremlin with a V8 in it and and uh, so we had plenty to talk about but uh, when he got down here he told me that he had brought something for me and he actually uh, bought something at a yard sale for me and I want to show you what it is it has to do with these socketed cap screws okay I got this back on a on a shelf but uh you can see this assortment this is all uh socketed cap screws and uh believe it or not they're all actually metric uh m6s you see they're short there's a little bit longer m6s Longer, and then uh, 
go to the eights. And eights longer, one inch. And eights longer. There's the tens. But uh, I mean, it's, it's a really good stock of bolts here. And uh, man, there's a couple. I don't know. Uh, number six is down there in the tens. But uh, yeah, I really appreciated that. And what what he didn't know, you know, when he got down here. Uh, and my son can definitely tell you that every year for uh, Christmas, I ask for bolts. And uh, he actually went to Tractor Supply and bought me, you know, bolts by the pound. And uh, so, and you know, I didn't have any kind of assortment of socketed cap screws. So this works out great. And uh, you know, you tap a hole, you know, when you're machining and stuff, you're going to tap it anyway. So what's the difference if you tap it metric or American? I mean, for what I'm doing, they work out great. And that's what we're using on this bike here. So. Uh, Kermit, I really appreciate it, buddy. And uh, I've got one more person I'd like to talk about, or people. Okay, this is something I don't do real often, but uh, but you know, if I watch and enjoy a, a particular YouTube channel, and uh, you know, really look forward to the videos, and and it's something that I uh, you know really like, but you know, the the actual YouTuber don't have a lot of uh, subscribers. You know, I don't mind at all helping them out, especially in this situation. Uh, hit and misfits. Uh, Jonathan and Eric, uh, two young fellows. Uh, and I'm, I want to say 18, 19 years old. I know Jonathan just graduated high school. But uh, Jonathan, you know, basically has a lot of hit and miss engine stuff like that. And uh, his friend Eric is the one that does all the, the videoing, and, or most of the video, and uh, do all the editing and putting the videos on. But... Uh, Jonathan has got a 1919 Model T and of his own that he's uh, actually got the engine out of right now, doing some work on. And uh, he's got a lot of hit-and-miss engines and, uh, you know, works on electric motors, you know, magnetos, uh, got some generators, got, you know, a little bit of everything. And uh, it's the kind of stuff I like to see, but it's not just that. It's the fact that, uh, you know, as, as all of us guys get older, uh, you know, we realize that... Uh, the, uh, the young folks sort of, uh, a lot of them disappoint you. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And, uh, you know, and then there's always them ones that uh, come along and, uh, you know, sort of give you a little bit of hope. And, you know, I, I like to think my son's like that. But, uh, you know, he uh, he's a good kid. And, you know, but just... You know, Jonathan and Eric are just, they're great people, and uh, I, I see in Jonathan, you know, what I used to be. You know, the, the excitement he gets from the from the engines and, you know, just the little things. You know, it don't take much to, to make me excited when it comes to, a, you know, something an old rusty magneto laying on the ground excites me, and, you know, he's sort of the same way. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to put a link in the description, and... Uh, you know, I'd really like for you to check them out. You know, they don't, they're not monetized, so they don't, uh, you know, they're not making money off the videos or anything like that, uh, which I, I'm going to suggest to them that they do just because it'll help them get more subscribers. But, uh, and Musty One is the one that made that suggestion to me because I had a thousand subscribers before I ever, uh, you know, even uh, monetized. And he told me that if I monetized it, YouTube would actually start advertising for me also because, you know, I was making them money. And he was right. And, you know, I, I, that's some advice I'd like to pass on to, uh, to Eric and Jonathan that, uh, you know, I know they, they uh, are not worried about that part of it, but, you know, it would help them out. And, uh, and you know, the, I really, really, really enjoy watching the videos. I, you know, especially the excitement that they've got for for antique, you know, engines and, you know, just anything that's got to do with, with old stuff. And, uh, but anyway, I'm going to put a link in the description, check them out, subscribe to them. Uh, I have a feeling that, uh, we're going to see, uh, a couple of boys that's going to turn out to be, you know, productive members of society. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all we can ask for really. And, uh, anyway, all right, I'm going in this one here, and uh, the weather's actually cleared up. It rained this morning, but it's quit raining, so we're going to get out and work on the uh, wrecker some. I think I'm going to cut the door in half and maybe get to work on the, the cab corner. 
and uh, I'll you know do some video on that. But I just want to show you this, and I got my distance right from my my cams. You know, it's very close. And, uh, you know, we can still tweak on this. We can shorten these up if we need to. I haven't checked the measurements yet. I need to go ahead and do that uh, and get the rocker ratio. But, you know, we're going to work with it either way. We're sort of going to do a com combination of uh, looks and uh, performance. In other words, we want it to run and we want it to run right. But, you know, if the difference of, of having a push rod that's angled and don't look right to me is going to give me, you know, Point two more horsepower, I would rather have it straight and drop that two point two horsepower. You know, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm not building this to be a you know race bike or you know I just want to uh, I want it to look decent. You know, I you know the what I get out of this is the the mechanical aspect of it. You know, it don't have anything to do with the riding. I could uh, I could build something all day long and uh, and not ride it and it wouldn't bother me a bit. You know, it's the uh, it's the mechanical part. I want to you know, I want to smell the burn exhaust and, you know, watch it run. And that's why I like to leave this stuff open because, you know, especially young people, kids, you know, when they see something and they see the, the push rods moving, they see the push rods moving the rock arms, they see the valves and the valve springs collapsing. It gives them way more of an idea of how this works than if it's all covered up. And, uh, I mean, in, in the, in the big picture of things that, you know, that's what we're, that's what, well, what my goal is in life, you know, to, uh, you know, keep things going like we hopefully want them to go and not let them change to become something that uh, we don't want it to be. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.